Hi, praise the Lord. How are you? Vanessa Sifiwe. Uh, my name is Lillian. This is Bam of Gilead. Um, we are blessed. I'm blessed to be back here again. I, I thank God. Uh, for sure, this is a miracle. <laughs> As a time I tried doing this, um, and then uh, because of space, uh, it just, it did cut off. And so I didn't continue. Like about um, four weeks ago also. But I bless the Lord. Now, uh, I will not uh, say much uh, about any words that I may have in case the phone or in case yeah, the space allows me, I'll say them at the end. All right. But if it doesn't allow me, uh, I'm going to post them at the description box. Yeah, I have quite a number of, of words. And uh, before I do that, allow me to pray. <clears throat> Forgive my voice. <clears throat> yes. Um, but the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Uh, dear God, we thank you. We honor you. Thank you for gathering us here today to listen to your word. I bless you, King of all glory, because you never gather your children in vain. Thank you for sending me out here, King of all glory. I bless your name because you are God and you alone reign from everlasting to everlasting. Open up our ears to you, O God. That Lord, we may hear from you, O God. That Lord, King of glory, anyone that this word is meant for, the King of all glory, they will find their way here. To the glory and to the honor of your name. Please use me as your vessel and as a vessel of honor to bring glory and honor into your name and that Lord you may gather for yourself as many as possible. In the mighty name of Jesus I yield O God. you mute every other voice I would like to speak other than your voice O God in the mighty name of Jesus. I surrender Amen. to you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. I do pray, trust and believe. Amen, amen and amen. Um, so it's so good to be back here again. Um, so what I'll be talking, actually, let me ask this question even before I get into the word and the recap. How is your stretch doing? There's a time I said here that um, this is gonna be um, there's going to be a lot of stretching, a lot of stretching. I don't know how yours is is doing, but mine is. It's quite something. But we bless the Lord for everything, and He's doing marvelous, beautiful things, great things. Um, I'm blessed. Uh, so the recap, last time we were talking about uh, the Lord's expectations upon uh, on uh, as you believe, are you as a believer after getting born again? Of course, when you're not a born, uh, when you're not born again, God expects you to now get born again. But what happens when you get you get born again? So the, so the Lord expects you, all right. The Lord expects you to to be a fruit, to be. Um, actually, I'll just sum everything and say that God expects us to bear and to demonstrate the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives, all right? We, it's it's nothing to do with, um, you know, I sin and, you know, I, I keep uh, sinning and keep sinning and then I, I keep repenting, keep repenting. The Lord is so, he's very keen. And I said that there are people, that someone said that he saw people in hell and they were born again Christians. Why would that happen? It's because they're not cultivating, thank you, Holy Spirit. They're not, they were not cultivating their what? They were not cultivating their, uh, their salvation, you know. And we said it is not by works. Yes, the Lord expects us to, you know, to do, um, the works of righteousness are uh, to do good works, but we are doing that. That is a, as a result of us getting born again, all right? It is as a result, not us doing it so that we can get salvation. Hallelujah. So today's word, um, I'm going to be uh, speaking on on the the prophet, the word, and, and um, testing the spirit. Sometimes back, I visited a salon, and now that is when God was bringing about this word, and he kept, I'm telling you, when God wants you to say something, but then let me say this, uh, before even we continue, I just, I don't just come out here to share anything that I feel, ah, this is very powerful, this is, you know, this is very blessing, this is very good, uh, you know, people need to know this now. Sometimes I would, I would sit and wait and wait until God confirms, confirms, reconfirm, confirms, and then confirms again. Because I don't want to just come out here and, you know, speak out of a flesh. Uh, that would be misleading people, and that would be actually uh, somehow seeking my way. 
or what is in the heart of God? What is the Lord saying in this season? Well, I know maybe this is past, <laughs> but I thank God uh, that I'm still out here to share this. But this is, was a result of what the Lord, uh, you know, brought about. Um, I'm hoping that I'm not going to be dis distracted, <laughs> distracted. Um, but the Lord is good. So, um, so I visited the salon and this lady was not giving or narrating a story of how on that particular day she was opening uh, the salon or the shop and then uh, this man who was claiming to be a man of God, he came, um, you know, just at the moment when he's, she was she was opening the, the salon and you know how she, the way she was describing the whole the whole thing um was it wasn't in a good way so she said this man came and asked for money that they want to build a church and um you know she said uh uh, who are you? What are you doing here? And all that the man, the, the man of God, started explaining. He was wearing uh, these attires that they, if you are Kenyan, I'm, you probably would get. Sorry, ignore my background. We are here. <laughs> um, um. So um, wearing these attire, and he was claiming to be a, a prophet of God, and um was asking for money that they were building a church and then so this lady kind of snapped this guy said you know get out of here um i mean it was bad i felt really bad well i didn't say anything but i really felt bad um and especially because of how this lady was was describing this man other than that now this other man of god visited our church and when God wants you to speak or say something, he'll do everything and anything to let you know, yes, it is me, go ahead and release it. There's even a time our, my, my now spiritual father, my home spiritual father, because I came back, when I came visit, when I came to stay at home with my parents, I now go to my home church. All right. Um, wow. We have someone here. Sorry about that. So, um, this other man of God, he came to the church that, you know, I'm now, I'm currently fellowshipping. And as he was preaching, he was actually not preaching about, uh, you know, men of God and all these things about testing the spirit and all that. And so he said, um, when there was this, there was this, um, chief and there was this man, man of God and the chief and the the villagers it's it's a real true real story um so the villager said that this man is not good that this man should be you know um should be removed from the village it, uh, just so they talked ill of him and until the chief bought the idea so the chief uh went to this man of god and he told him you know um I, I, I don't believe their story actually but you know what I have I'm here for their service so I will have to do that please uh, we will pack all your things and you will leave this village for those of you who know Gatondo uh, that area of uh, Motomo somewhere I think around is it really Motomo if I remember the name I will let you know um, so uh, they packed the, the things and he left the village of course the other people who contributed to that you know the parking the chief wouldn't have done it alone so that they le he left the village he was a sincere man of god he was a good man of god what happened later is something i, I really want you to note so um there were people who were who were sliced as whole as you are a human being your body is taken and then sliced into pieces and i can't remember what happened to the chief but also he was something happened to him and he kind of passed on why am i saying all these things um i i know and i have i've i've been there i've sat you know between or um in a gathering of you know people speaking about men and women of god that you know these people are not are not you know are not good they are not doing what they're supposed to do correction when it comes to correction it's fine it's okay 
and this is not what I'm saying. I'm saying it is fine. Well, I'm not against someone correcting other, another person, all right? But I'm against when you just sit there and and it is not the will of God for any man to sit and judge anyone. Live alone, the man of God. So today we will be discussing, as I had mentioned, the man of God. And actually when I refer to the prophet, when I say the prophet uh, and the word and testing the spirit, here I'm not referring to um, only the person that sits in the prophet's office. You know, in the Old Testament, God would call his men prophets, all right? Anyone that bought or was very... Yeah, actually, anyone that was bearing the, the, the word of God or was speaking on behalf of God, mostly, they were actually referred as prophet, right? And in this case, but when it comes to that New Testament, there are people that have offices, the fivefold ministries that we call the pastor, the teacher, the prophet, the evangelist, the apostle, all right? So when I'm saying the prophet here, I'm saying anyone that is carrying the message of God. Praise the name of the living God. I am saying anyone that is bearing the name, you know, I am speaking for God. I am speaking from God. And we're going to read, uh, um, uh, first we will read in the book of uh, Matthew, uh, how when you receive what it means to receive a man of God, what it means when you receive this man of God. By the, well, not many people know, but it is good to know. Because I myself, before, I didn't know about, you know, you know, they are doing bad. And then I talk about it. Yes, it is true they are doing bad. They are not doing that which the Lord, that would please the Lord. But then you talk about it in a way that, uh, you know, diminish them or, you know. The best thing we can do is to stand in the gap for such a person and pray for them. And this is so very important. I pray that you will bear with me. Please bear with me. Um, and then uh, the Lord is going to bless you as you read with me in the book of Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. And then you're going to look at the story of uh, Elijah. Actually, when now the Lord was confirming this word, he allowed Reverend Charles. I sit on that Reverend Charles, Kenothia. He allowed him to speak on that word, like to read and then to speak. Of course, it was on a, on a different message, but he read the text, all right? And then another time, the following Sunday, um, the following Sunday, it was uh, this other lady who read a similar text. I was like, God, of course, that day, that day that my, my reverend spoke on the word, I came and recorded and then it got disconnected and I couldn't, I couldn't upload it. It was difficult so <clears throat> matthew chapter 10 verse uh we are gonna start from 40 40 yes 10 40 it says anyone who welcomes you welcomes me and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me now anyone this chapter 10 of matthew this was when jesus was sending his disciples uh to go out there and preach the gospel and he was telling them now Anyone that will receive you will be receiving me, Jesus, into their homes, into their lives, into their business places, into whatever place they are, okay? Anyone that will be receiving me will be receiving the Father, all right? 41, um, I, uh, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet, anyone that welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet, I'm welcoming this pastor in the name of he is a pastor, not in the name he's my friend, not in the name he's my cousin, not in the name he's my dad, not in the name he was, he's my relative, he's someone that I know, he's my friend. Actually, um, allow me to share this. Now, thankfully, if you're following this, you'll receive the word. Um, I received a word, I had a dream, and then um, in that dream, um, I saw myself sitting on something like a desk. I'll be sharing. I think this is the right way actually to be sharing these words because maybe probably someone just comes out here to just listen to these uh, specific words and then leave. Um, I was sitting on a desk, a desk, the one that you sit uh, when you're schooling. And then I was so bored. I'm telling you, I was, I was tired. And then this lady is speaking and I'm like, gosh, just finish. I would scratch my head. I was like, just finish. 
uh, finish and then uh, so that we can leave. So it was kind of test because he said, uh, and the winner of today is, I was like, gosh, just quiet and finish. So she said, it's Lily. And I was like, what? It's something I never expected. It was so, I, I never expected it in the dream. I never expected it at all, at all, at all. So I was very shocked. <clears throat> and then I woke up and they, they said, congratulations. Actually, I noted that they said, congratulations. And I, sh I couldn't hold the word to myself. I shared this word on my status that someone you're going to receive a congratulations. And uh, yeah, that's it. It's something you never, you don't expect or you're not expecting. And this lady received the word. He said, Amen. And uh, after a while, a few days, she actually told me that I've, I've gotten a job. She had stayed without a job. I've gotten a job, um, you know. And then I was like, wow, that's good. Glory to God. And you see, she received the word. Okay. Um, so for someone, okay, I've learned not to take things personally, like it's my own or my mine and my own only. So for someone, um, it was like January those days, but you can still receive the word. Someone a congratulations will come your way, and it's something that you less expect, like less expect it will be like a test because um if i can maybe mention uh let me not mention that but yes it was like a, a it was a test it is an interview something that you know something that will be you will be a winner it will be something that it's not only you that is involved yeah the other people so you'll receive a congratulations um so and anyone that received um, a prophet in the name see this i'm not saying that i'm a prophet <laughs> i'm not saying that i'm a pastor but I'm, a, I'm just bearing the word of god all right i'm just speaking for god and so this lady this lady received the word she's my friend actually she's even married she's she has a kid she's older than me way far but she received the word of God from just a mere friend. She did not consider. And another time also happened that uh, I, when I, when I have a word and I, I feel I can't really hold this word, I release it no mind on my status and say, you know, someone this and this is gonna happen. Another time, the husband now didn't have a job, and she received a word also. I had I can't remember what I, I shared. It was about the promises of God. Wow. Now, the next one I'm going to share as we continue will be the, about uh, uh, something the Lord is going to do. It was about the promises of God. And so the husband wasn't, he didn't have work and uh, it was tough on them. And she received the word and when she received the word, few weeks later, the husband got a job. Few weeks later, the husband was promoted. It is good to always receive a word of God as though you're receiving it from, from God. Do not consider that person as a friend. Do not consider that person as a, as a you know, as, as a relative, you know. Don't consider that person as, as, a, as a, you know, whoever you would consider them to be, a cousin, an uncle, a dad. I remember there was a time, as, as, we, also, uh, as we also discussing about receiving a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive the prophet's award. And I'll explain what it means to receive the prophet's award. Um, a story is given by this man of God that uh, the lady was really struggling. The, the lady was, uh, uh, the husband was a pastor and the lady now, or the, the wife, they were struggling, they were having issues. I can't re remember well, so uh, what it was. But one time, this husband would pray for people that would get healed, breakthroughs, you know, things would happen, blessings and miracles and all those things. And this lady decided, no, I'm not going to look at you as, as my husband, as the father to my children, as a man that I live with. I'm going to consider you as a man of God. And sometimes <clears throat> she went and knelt before this, this man of God. Now, with the intention, I am looking up to you as a man of God, not as my husband, not as a man, uh, the father to my children, all right? And the, 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 of course, the pastor, the husband now prayed. And I've ever given that story here again, prayed for this lady. And guess what? She received her blessing. She received her miracle. 
what am I trying to say? When you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, <clears throat> and I've said, this is a, sorry, this is anyone that is bearing the word of God, that is bearing um, the good news of God, that is speaking for God and on behalf of God. You know, uh, in uh, Matthew, the Lord uh, Jesus Christ, he sent all of us, you know, go out there. Every Christian, you and I, we are made to go out there and make disciples. With that, I mean, even you who is uh, speaking, anyone that is receiving, sorry, anyone that is receiving <clears throat> the man who is speaking for God, is receiving Christ himself. So what I, I mean by you going out there and, you know, and, and, and making disciples when you go out there and preach the gospel, because no one can believe without them being preached to or without them hearing the word, the word of God. And so um, receiving a prophet, that is pastor, teacher, prophet, apostles, you disciple of Christ going out there to to speak the gospel the gospel of God who receive is like they are receiving Christ right and after receiving that the word he says that um a pro we receive prophet's reward receiving prophet's reward is exactly what considers us God considers us this is what I'll pay you with when you go out there to speak on my behalf the reward when you when god is saying that you receive the prophet's reward is you will receive exactly what what god is meaning to pay this person with when they receive when they go out there to share the gospel now let me give an example uh this uh less storage let's hope it's going to, to sustain us um this man stands and say, like, for example, as, as I was given, I was, I was giving the story of gathering this, this prophet asking for money because they're building a church. So when you give to that man or woman of God with the intention, they are going to, to build a church. Fine. I'm going to take them as they are. I'll give as they've asked. And they are saying they are speaking for God. It is good to test the spirit. I'll tell you how you can test the spirit. When you give and this person goes and builds uh, the, 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 the church, anyone that will give their lives in that church, you will have a share, a percent, a percent of what you contribute. Like... God will count as though you were there, you preached to them and they gave their life to Christ as though you were the one who did that, that work. Is it clear, really? When God will be paying this person for, you have preached, this person has given their lives to Christ. You preached in this church, the building that, uh, let's say Samuel contributed money for, Samuel will be counted as though he preached until this person or these people, you be that is what it always means when you receive a prophet. And even let's say um, I'm contributing to uh, someone who is going out for missionary, okay, uh, so that they can go give out food and they can go get transport and all that. Anything good they will do out there because of the money that or because of the resources, it may not be money really. I can give out my car. Uh, you know, I can give out foods for people to go and eat. Anything that I'll give because of that work will speak for me. I'll be counted as though I did, I was present doing that work. I hope it is opening up your eyes so that we don't we don't see I'm building a church and people are running and then after the church is completed, you're back again. Or you people are you know, are going out for missionary and you're told to give out because of the mission work and you think, no, these people just, just want money. Anyway, so that is it. When you receive this man, you receive a reward. The second meaning would mean that you will see something that this man of God holds to themselves as theirs. 
For instance, a word that they will speak upon your life. There are words that are inspired by the Holy Spirit when a man of God says, Thou says the Lord. That is a word from God. But then there are times a man of God, because of how good you've treated them or you've allowed them into your place, like we're going to read, they will take a word because you have honored them. God sees and because he is God, he will allow them to speak that which they desire to see in your life. Let's turn in the book of uh, First, First Kings. 17 so this is the word that uh, god had to allow my speech of father to read so uh in the book of uh first kings okay um wow first king 17 first king 17 um i'll read and i said sometimes back or i normally say it is important when you have time to read the word of God audibly. Uh, there are challenges, situations, demonic uh, plans that uh, will be destroyed just because you've read out you the word of God uh, with a loud voice. Some we pray for, some we speak through the word of God. So allow me to read the word of God <clears throat> and read it, read, with, read it with me. Uh, if you have your Bible, First Kings chapter 17, First Kings chapter 17, it says, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, now listen to this, before whom I stand. This is a man of God, and he is speaking. I said sometimes God would inspire someone to speak the word and say, That says the Lord. And other times, he will speak to that a manifestation and especially those who sit in the in the office of the prophet to see to see what they want to see manifested so here elijah spoke he was not speaking for god hear this he was not speaking on behalf of something that god had told him to speak listen to this as the lord he said, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand. You can imagine he's standing before God and he's there with Ahab. That is what, how powerful it means to, to minister for God. From God and on behalf of God. I stand, there shall be no, there shall not be dew, no rain, these years except at my word. Even if another prophet comes and speaks that there is going to be rain, it's not going to rain. Even if uh, you think and you force your idol, idols or gods to, you know, to allow rain to come, it's not going to come. Until I say it, me, myself, not Elijah, he's saying to Ahab, except at my word. That is the only time. That's the only time. If you can read uh, the book of uh, Kings, you will see what Ahab had had done, and it was it was bad before the eyes of God. He actually did worse things before other um, than other 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 kings who were who were there before him. So he did bad things. And here, Elijah, inspired by God, or wanted to show that God is real. And because you don't want to to hear me, because you don't want to listen, because you don't want to take the word of God. I'm going to force you to do this. At my word, it's not going to rain. And here, it doesn't say how many years, but in the book of uh, James, it says that it was for three and a half years, is it? All right. So then the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith. Wow. If you can research about this story of Elijah, this brook Cherith was a place that God was preparing him it was a place of preparation. God was preparing Elijah uh, for a certain uh, moment that was going to come, that he was going to face the, uh, you know, the, the, the prophets of Baal, that he was going to do the, I think that's the biggest miracle he did, you know, uh, you know, calling for fire from heaven. 
God was preparing Elijah this place called the brook of Cherith. It was a place of preparation. Um, and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows, hallelujah, wow. Let me just say it because it's, it's, it has come. And some of us, God calls us to a place of hiding. I don't know whether you've been there. I don't know whether you are there actually. And I don't know whether God is calling you there to that place of, of a hiding. A place of hiding may be um, God is calling you to withdraw and be with him for more hours than you used to. Sometimes um, you would get fed up of going to parties like you know weddings and all those things and being with people and would prefer having the word of god with you and praying more than you're used to sometimes he will have you this generation with the social media he'll have you shut from social media just to be with him he'll ask you and actually I would encourage you to read uh, the, the story of moses it was when God noticed that Moses were looking, was looking that he spoke. It wasn't before. When God noticed that you're looking, he spoke. Allow me to read that for you. Exodus chapter 3, verse... <coughs> sorry. Verse 4, it says... It's actually 3. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that, saw that he turned aside to look, God called him from the midst of the bush. So it was when, it was when God noticed that he has actually turned aside to look, that he decided to, to speak, all right? So here, uh, uh, this guy called... Um, Elijah, he's a speaking, he's a speaking that which he wants to see manifesting in this natural, in the, in the natural. He's a speak, he did not say, that says the Lord. I need you to note that. And some of us, um, maybe with the spiritual parents or with the spiritual authority or with the men and the women of God or with the people that we see ministering, some would speak you know, they probably are seeing the suffering that you're going through. Let's say lack of a job. All right. And because they can see that and you have received them. Or maybe let's say you're sick. Actually, let me just use this. The one that you're sick. You believe in what they speak. You believe in them. You believe in their God. They speak word of healing because of that. They do. They they will not say, that says the Lord receive your healing. All right? I need you to get this. There are them that will say, that says the Lord. There are them who would want to see something manifesting in your life or in the natural because of how you receive them. So this is why it is important to receive the people, the spiritual authority that the Lord has set before us or to us, to receive them as though they are sent by God because they are sent by God. So this kind... He's prepared in the brook of Cherith, and he stood, which flow in the Jordan, and it will be that you shall drink from the brook. There's a, there's a brook there. And I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. I love this part so much. Remember the ravens, the only food is meat. They do not eat vegetables. They do not eat sand. Their only food is ravens. And how God wants to show us that everything in the world, on heaven, in hell, listens to my voice. And they actually obey. Yes, they actually obey. Because this raven would deliver meat and bread to, would deliver meat and bread to Elijah. And so he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook. I don't know why this part is coming back. Before whom I stand. Okay, we'll, we will come back there. The word of the Lord, for he went and stayed. So it means that God was aware of what Elijah, his servant, was doing. 
Why? Because he was standing before the Lord. He says, before whom I stand. And, why, and also why the Lord comes and tells him, he gives him instruction. And some of us, I know God has given you instruction. And sometimes it is, it is tough to follow, to believe, yes, but God calls us to obey the instruction as exactly as he gives us to, as he gives them to us. So the Lord was aware because Elijah was standing before, before the Lord when he was speaking these words. And so he gives him in, instruction. So he has, he has um, allowed these words to come out of him. And after that, he gives him instruction of what he's, he's supposed to do. And Elijah obeys the instruction. And so he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows in the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while, when uh, well, I did a research on this, and uh, it is not stated after what while, that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. My God, this guy is suffering because of uh, the words he spoke. Remember he said, it is after I say that there is going to be rain, that is when it is going to rain. In the meantime, there is not going to be rain. And here we are told the brook dry, dried. Why did it dry? Is it not because he spoke? It was because he spoke. A word that comes from a genuine man of God, a man that is sent by God. And surprisingly, he would not revoke his words and say, ah, I'm suffering. Then let it be that, uh, you know, let there be rain just because I'm suffering. But he was looking at the, at the heart of God. He was looking at the interest of, of God, actually. He was looking after the interest, wow, after the interest of God. I know sometimes we are, we, we are stuck in between. Is it my interest? Is it, is it the interest of God? But until these people get to know that there is God, there is a true God in heaven, that the, the gods of Baal are not true, until then, he was not going to speak any word for rain to rain. And so uh, it is not told after how long, but, is he, they, uh, but the writer says, after a while that means it is not after a night or one morning but it is after a while then the word of the lord eight came to him saying arise go to zarapheth which belongs to sidon and dwell there see i have commanded a widow there to provide for you so why i am reading all this i'm gonna read down there and you will see this lady <clears throat> This lady, uh, let me just paraphrase it. Maybe you can read the entire, uh, the entire, the entire chapter. This lady obeyed the word of Elijah. And here I'm gonna let me read where he says, "For the, for the Lord God says," um, and Elijah said to her, "Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. That is verse 13, and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For that says the Lord." So in this case, Elijah spoke on behalf of God. In this particular case. Remember the first says he did not say, for that says the Lord. But in this case, so they, there are two levels where a man or a woman of God would speak. Speaking for God and speaking what he wants to see manifesting in your life. Not because of anything, but because you have honored them and you have received them. Now, how do you know that truly this, and he says, um, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So here he says, it is the word of God. The first one, he did not say that, says the Lord. Okay? And it is because that, it is because this lady honored, this is a man of God. How do you get to know the true word of God or one who is speaking on behalf of God or what is the word that is coming from, not because of their own motives, 
how do you test the speed in simple terms? So I'm going to read something. First, first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19 says, Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with content, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. When the word says do not quench the spirit, it doesn't mean that testing and treating proper uh, testing the spirit means that you're you're quenching the Holy Spirit. No. It means there is that part of quenching the Holy Spirit. That is if you're receiving if you've had the the, the, the word and you're not receiving it as God would want you. It is basically making the Holy Spirit angry. Actually, I would say disobedience. You you've heard the word of God and you have not received it. But he says, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind. So the word of God allows us to test the spirit. A word of God, <clears throat> how you get to know that truly this is um, man speaking from a word of God, uh, from God, is when is when what they are speaking is actually in line with the word of God. Anyone that speaks and whatever they are speaking is not in line with the word of God. I've just gotten a very perfect example. When someone tells you, God said, you're no longer going to be giving 10%. You said you'll be giving 90% of your salary as a tithe. So that is, you get to know that it is not right. That is, uh, it is actually contrary to what the word of God says. If anything, anyone speaks and claiming they're speaking for God or in behalf, please just bear with, with my, my background noise. Um, if it is, if it's contrary to the word of God, then it is not a true prophecy. Wow. It is, wow. Um, it is not a pro true prophecy. And let me say also, um, wow. Okay. Um, uh, when we talk of, let me go to the next point. Um, <clears throat> if it is against, it should go hand in hand with the character of God. God is loving. When someone tells you, uh, or they says that uh, God said you kill your enemy, I know you can't relate. Or God said you pray this against your enemy. God is a very loving God. There is no evil in God. There is, there is nothing bad in God. Even with our enemies, he tells us to love them and to pray for them. So it, when anyone tells you that... Uh, he said this about your enemy. Test our spirit. So the other thing is, is, is the person drawing you to themselves or are they drawing you to God? Are they drawing you to themselves? Like, um, I have had, um, I have had uh, people would say maybe I'm the major, major mighty prophet, um, and I'm able to heal all kinds of diseases. You know, I am able to cast things out. Like I, 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 you know, I, there's nowhere they are saying that it is the power of God. It is the Lord's doing. It is, I credit this to God. It is not me who have done it. It is the Lord who have done it, you know. So that is how you can also test. As they Are they drawing are they drawing you to to themselves or I mean even when you, and let me tell you these things are happening as a time uh, just recently the Lord was ministering to me about deception the way there is a lot of deception in the world a lot the enemy has released deception in the world like never before there's a lot a lot and do you believe me when when I say there are people who are still in church and they are getting lost. Not because, um, you know, whatever thing is, is well, then the, 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 there is no Bible in the church, but because the person, the leader who is leading them, he's leading them astray against the word of God. Of course, they will still use the Bible. 
they still use the bible that is why i always insist here in this channel please please read the word of god for yourself know the word of god for yourself pray don't always wait for someone to pray for you pray and know prayer for yourself and know god who answers prayers for yourself all right there's just a lot of deception has been released even in church the enemy is using even wow even the elite the elite yes those who would think there's a bishop this a man of god he's been salvation for many for her for, for for many years they can never get mm, that's a lie from the enemy no one no one can you can you know just because you're so old in the in the in the in the, in, in the spiritual things you would say no i can never get deceived you'll get deceived very quickly and especially if you do not have the word of god in you and actually how to how the lord can help you test the spirit very easily and get to know what is uh, what is true and what is not true is when you have uh much word of god in you so um when someone is drawing you to themselves and not to god and when they are not bringing the glory to god you get to know mm, uh this word may not be true okay and then uh, maybe when uh, <coughs> There's, there's an, in, an inward witness. Many times that I've ever been given um, prophecies or word of God or someone saying, the Lord told me this and this about you or the Lord is saying this and this. Many times, actually most times, the Lord would have, like that week, the, word, the Lord would, how do I say it? It is something that the Lord has been ministering to me about. It is not something new, like if <laughs> I've been given maybe, for instance, let's say uh, if God is telling you uh, this is this this and this and this is what is going to happen to you maybe the next few years or so, or this is what is what is going to happen to you in the in the next few months, the Lord would ha will have been ministering to me about that thing before this man or woman of god comes to tells me they just come as a confirmation well yes any word of god that is brought to you it, it should come as a confirmation of what the lord has been ministering to you and that is why you should have the word of god in you all right um and then so there is the inward witness there is the conviction that uh, these the person just comes to confirm and then of course uh the fulfillment of the word of god in someone's life if someone told you that um, the lord said this and after a while that word comes to pass as uh, we see also in the book of deuteronomy that uh, um, a true prophet is known by what when they speak the word comes to pass anyway so that is just a few things over how you can test the spirit we can we will see how uh, this lady after receiving the word from elijah after things happening and he spoke and things came to pass, this lady says what? So let's continue reading 17 over 15. Elijah, Elijah, 1 Kings 17, 15. So, <clears throat> sorry, she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her household ate for many days. Um... They ate for many days, okay? The bean of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil uh, ran dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Have you heard that? Which he spoke by Elijah. And so this lady, now it happened after, after all these things, we can see that... Uh, Elijah told this lady that it is not going to dry up. It is, it is, you're going to eat it for many days. Um, after speaking, it came to pass, you know, uh, they ate it for many days. It never dried up. And we will see the son to this lady, he got sick. And Elijah, listen to this. God did not tell Elijah that, you know, this child is going to be well. By my word, this child is going to be well. So he did what he was supposed to do. And men and women of God, they stand in the gap 
for us believers. All right? And let me say this. Anointing you do not honor will never benefit you. When we say, <clears throat> when we say, uh, maybe, um, let me give, if you, you do not honor or respect or you again is a, a man or a woman of God, and then you go and you want them to declare blessings over you, these things are spiritual. Even if, even if he speaks blessings over you, the spiritual world knows what goes on, you know? They know what, what, what goes on, that you do not truly honor this. So it's not going to work for you. But when you honor the men and women of God that we sit under, even when they speak, when they speak a word and you believe in that word, and even according to the book of Chronicles 2020, that, uh, you know, we honor, we believe in the men, the word of God, and then we believe in God, and then we believe in the men, in the men and women God has placed us under. So Elijah took it upon himself to pray for this child. Actually, he died. The child died. And Elijah took it upon himself to pray for this child. And because this lady had honored Elijah, and he actually said that I know truly that you are a man of God. And when, when, when the child got healed, the lady said, then the woman said to Elijah, now by this I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth so she confirmed and said you truly are a man of god all these things have come to pass you've raised my child from dead from from you know from from the dead see your son lives that is 23 verse 23 because of how she honored uh, she honored the man of god the lord declared a blessing or well, elijah uh ensured that these son will live because you have honored me and it was confirmed that elijah truly was a man of god so what am i telling us today if we do not agree with the uh with you know the men and the women that we see and we think they're not true or they're not doing the right thing the best thing you can do is to pray for them don't point fingers upon them you don't know what they talk with their god when they are when when they are in their closet you know, like one I know, uh, everybody would, would get to know what they, they are doing out here. But this man is speaking the word of God. Sometimes I listen to, <laughs> let, let, allow me to just say this. I receive a word from God when, when I'm switching on to this you know, television station and I'm listening to what they're speaking. It is exactly what, you know, the Lord had been ministering to me. Yes, to say that they're also listening. Well, if they're not receiving from God, then I'm also not receiving from God. And of course, I'm receiving, I'm hearing from God. So what am I trying to say? If you do not agree with someone, don't go fighting them. Love them and pray for them. That is the best thing you can do. And the Lord is calling us, is calling us in this season to honor those 